cookout and coke enthusiasts, internets, first of all, again, happy birthday. Second, my name is Peridium, and welcome to five wild survivor moments not shown on camera 3.0. Because what we don't see on camera is sometimes even more scandalous than what we do, and well, these mysteries aren't gonna unravel themselves, so let's talk about them. Also, if you missed the first two videos, check them out. The producers did confiscate the brick, but uh, we will find a way to work it out. Regardless, here's the next wild moment. Sonic the Hedgehog style. What about two-tailed foxes? Echidnas. What about weasels? Uh, wh what about weasels? In the premiere episode of season 28, Kageon, there is a very quick moment that you may have missed where Tony is describing his brawn tribe. Be right here listening to what they gotta say, and I'm gonna hear everything. So whatever useless Cliff tells Weasel Wu, I'm gonna know crucial information, that's the key to this. This was an interesting description of the two of them. I certainly wouldn't call Cliff useless, but okay. But he calls Wu a weasel, and this was pretty random and out of left field. What did Wu do to deserve that? Oh, if that isn't the million dollar question of the season. Well, after the season ended, several interviews emerged from the players about the final two. In one of those interviews, Jeffra described why she believed she could have beaten Wu. He wasn't that respected. In another, Trish commented how Wu was untrustworthy, they couldn't take him at his word, and that he did something early in the season on the Braun tribe that got him in hot water and caused the rest of his tribe to lose faith in him. Huh. Okay. Keep going. Spencer then held an AMA on Reddit after the season, and he said that he heard from Sarah about a story that happened where Wu annoyed the rest of the Braun tribe, but then Sarah got yelled at by the producers for talking about it, and Spencer said he didn't think he was allowed to even talk about it here. Okay, now it's getting weird. Something happened on the Braun tribe early in the season, and nobody's allowed to talk about it, but they are alluding to it. This is almost conspiracy theory level weird. About a year later, the website Inside Survivor published an article about this mystery going over all the details, and they also revealed they had an unnamed source that they could trust that told them the actual story. During one of the early game storms, possibly the one where Wu was really happy to just be on Survivor, Wu had snuck away from the tribe camp and stumbled upon a production camp where he drank fresh water and ate some snacks. That's definitely not allowed and is against the rules, but he stayed there for a bit and then somehow got caught. The details are a bit murky here, but regardless of how he got caught, his fellow tribe mates found out and were not happy to hear that he broke the rules and also gained an unfair advantage. Wu also apparently drank a camera operator's water pack when they weren't looking, which uh, wasn't cool either. I mean, it kept him hydrated, although they do have a water well, so I'm not really sure why he thought that was necessary. But Inside Survivor's sources were unnamed, so we have to make of it what we want. Well, that is, until after Season 40, Winners at War, in another AMA on Reddit, when Tony hopped on to answer a few questions. A Redditor asked him about the origin of Weasel Woo and and, uh, well, Tony answered the question. Wu would drink the producer's water. He would drink it up. Probably multiple times. Which kind of confirms what the anonymous source had said, so perhaps it's possible Wu also went into the producer's camp. Either way, we heard it here from a player who was actually there and straight up told us what the answer was. Took a lot of years to get here. Wu lost his tribe's trust early in the season. It earned him a nickname that did make the final cut in the episode, but unfortunately, we didn't get to see any of the reasons why. The rain is gnarly, treacherous, freezing, it's pouring, it's terrible, but uh, this is what Survivor's all about, baby. Get some water to drink right here, kid. Oh, that's good, man. Speaking of camp raids, let's talk about the next wild moment with Eric Reichenbach. Not from Fans vs. Favorites 1, but from its sequel, Fans vs. Favorites 2. Nope, we're not talking about that camp raid. I want to highlight a story in the background of this season of Karamoan that most fans probably don't know anything about. If you recall on season 26, Karamoan at the final five, after Brenda is blindsided, we start the finale episode in the dark. On the walk back to the beach from Tribal Council, where we see Eric collapse all of a sudden and then have the doctors check him out. Eric wasn't in a good state. He was dramatically malnourished, his heart rate was low, and he unfortunately had to get pulled from the game. This came as a major surprise to everyone. It's almost as if Eric isn't allowed to get past fifth place. Something bizarre has to happen to him. Well, something bizarre actually did happen. 
Let me take you back to the tribe swap of this season. Eric went on an escapade around the area and accidentally cut his leg. Now this isn't in the episode at all, so you wouldn't know this, but this does come directly from Eric himself. And a wave came up and hit me um, along with everybody else, but it, when, it, when the wave hit me, it pushed me over and it cut um, my leg open. So like right in the middle of my shin, it was cut open. Um, and they said it looked okay, but they're gonna watch it for infection because a lot of people were having um, issues with infections from cuts. Throughout the season, Eric was always monitoring his cut, but it never posed a problem. That was until the family visit happened at the final six. Eric's brother showed up and checked him out and told him that his cut didn't look great. And yeah, at some point that wound on his leg got infected and was inflamed. If you check out the final six immunity challenge, you will notice it doesn't look great. I actually went back and looked at every other episode and could barely notice a scratch, but then in this one, it's clear as day. It's, it's really gross. My leg was dripping something into the water. I don't know if it was blood or whatever, but it was infected. And when Eric gets to tribal, before they walk in and sit down, the medics clear him to stay in the game. They say his wound isn't bad enough that they would need to pull him given it's already day 36, only three more days to go. Which is kind of interesting given what's about to go down. And I met with Joe, who's the main doctor. He did all the vitals and all the stuff. And he said, you know, you, you do have a, an infection going on. They also gave him a pill of penicillin and said he should take it to help the wound from getting much worse. I didn't know this <laughs> until after everything, but I'm allergic to penicillin or potentially allergic to penicillin or can have a reaction to penicillin. So Eric followed their advice, took the pill, and as the tribal council went on, he began to feel woozy. The entire tribal council was like a blur. Noises became distorted and he even said that when Brenda was voted out, he didn't realize what happened. I remember when Brenda got her torch snuffed, I didn't realize she was getting her torch snuffed. She was just waving to everybody. And so I was like, oh, hi, Brenda. And I waved to Brenda. He actually thought Sherry was voted out. If you rewatch his reaction, it's really not much of anything. You would think he would have a bigger reaction to getting blindsided and losing his number one ally, but uh, well, nope. And then they leave tribal council and the rest is what we see on camera. After we left tribal council is when I collapsed. I just fell down. I was like, something's wrong. I'm really dizzy. From there, they did all the stuff that you saw in the finale episode of Caramon where they took my blood pressure and checked on me and did all this other stuff. And yeah, it's unfortunate. So what we end up seeing at the beginning of the finale where Eric passes out is a whole storyline of his cut leg and his injury that just didn't get shown in any capacity throughout the entire season. And it's pretty crazy that it happened in the first place. I'm waking up with two IVs in my arm and I was like, what happened? And I was like, oh, so I'm behind Sherry. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, so Sherry just got voted out and now I'm out after Sherry. I'm like, and I was kind of happy <laughs> that I beat Sherry, that I got a little farther than Sherry. And they're like, no, Sherry's still in the game. Like Brenda got voted out. And I'm like, what? Brenda, Brenda didn't get voted out. I saw her and they're like, no, she got voted out. This next story was actually caught on camera, sorta but the follow-up to it wasn't. And it's unanswered to this day, so we gotta talk about it. You may remember in my previous video, I talked about Kel and the beef jerky from season two, the Australian Outback, and how he allegedly smuggled in jerky, ate it, and got caught. He denied it, a lot of first-hand accounts said otherwise, but technically we don't know really what happened. Well, four seasons later, in season six, the Amazon, another food-related incident occurred when on day six at the women's tribe, after the women were sifting through their crate of stuff, they ended up finding a granola bar wrapper at the bottom. That's weird. I'm pretty sure the producers don't let the players bring food into the game. I mean, that's kind of the point of the show. It, it's called Survivor. The women looked at the wrapper and weren't sure what to make of it, as we saw in the episode. They decided to burn the granola bar, to be fair, but after that, fingers began to get pointed around the tribe. And the biggest accusation came from Jean, who blamed Janet. She believed this was Janet's bar and she was cheating. Oh boy, <laughs> Real Housewives of the Amazon. Janet denied it being hers, but later at Tribal Council, Janet was voted out. Although, similar to Kel and the Jerky, not because of the granola bar, just because Janet really didn't want to be on the show anymore. She was done with it. She was ready to go. Let's just say Janet Koth was not going to be accepting any calls for All Stars anytime soon. For all of you middle-aged women out there that are thinking of having a midlife crisis, I would highly suggest 
a change of hairstyle. But the reality of all of this is that we never found out the answer to the situation. Whose granola bar was that? Why was it there? Janet continued to deny it being hers after the season and nobody else on the tribe has ever admitted it was theirs to this day. Well, one pair of pants later. Over 10 years later, in an online reunion for the season in 2013, a little bit of behind the scenes information emerged. Alex Bell from the men's tribe mentioned how right before the players were going to head out to start the season, he was getting ready to start filming for day one and right beforehand, he decided to change his pants. I got my pants out of my backpack. Do you know what was in my backpack? We're not a all about? wrapper, I swear to God. And I took it out and I handed it to somebody. I said, this was in my backpack. <gasps> huh. Now, how did that get in there? Alex didn't know what to make of it, so he told the producers they confiscated the granola bar, and that was that. It wasn't until he heard about the women's tribe granola bar that he began to connect some dots. I swear on every, I swear on my life, I swear so on my- So you're saying that somebody put them in our bags, or certain I'm people's bags. I'm saying in my backpack, there yes. was one. I remember you doing that. If you wouldn't have found that granola bar, then you would have been in the same situation as yeah, on our tribe. Was it possible the producers themselves were in on the crime? Was this an inside job? It would make sense if they were looking to stir up drama. They saw it unfold four seasons prior. Alex also mentioned a really important detail. The producers packed those bags, not him. He didn't do that. He didn't put anything in that bag. They decide that for him. It was entirely mandated by the showrunners, which meant it definitely came from them. The official, the official story when I handed it to someone was like, oh, someone must have dropped that when they were packing your backpack. Because remember guys, we didn't pack our backpacks. They packed our backpacks. And he at first thought it was just an accident, but it's pretty coincidental that two granola bars were found, one on each tribe. Heidi from the Women's Tribe went on a podcast a couple of years ago and even said that she thinks it was actually the producers and personally, I'm with both of them. I thought that one of the camera people put it there. Just because of everybody's reaction to it, it was so odd and oddly timed and oddly found. That's weird. I mean, it really was. It was, it was almost too coincidental. For Africa, it's just the third season, and I don't know if it has anything to do with the beef jerky with Kel, but <laughs> we were searched. We were searched every single place, our bags, our person, yep. everything. Yep. Surely season six y'all were as well. And given Mark Burnett has stated that after Kel in season two, the producers thoroughly search each player before the game begins. And so given all of this, I feel like the dots are pretty easy to connect here. Reason why finding the granola bar in our little chest upset me is because you know, we came out here to play a game, play fair. We knew we weren't going to get any food. I don't like cheaters. Smuggling food is a theme for this video. This next story is one of my personal favorites just because of how harmless and hilarious it is. It's a quick moment from season 18, Token Sheens, and it happens at the final seven tribal council where Sierra is voted out. Also known as the tribal council after Tyson is voted out at the final eight. And that's an important detail for this story as the details come from Tyson himself on his podcast at The Ringer called the pod has spoken where he shared his experience about the first time he was ever on the jury sitting next to brendan watching all the drama unfold to keep it short tyson was annoyed for getting voted out and he was feeling extra petty and he knew the one thing the cast of survivor always thinks about and that's food specifically peanut butter and chocolate so being tyson he concocted a plan with brendan where they would both bring in peanut butter and chocolate and then when the tribal council was at its apex they would both whip out the food open it up in front of the jury and begin chowing down and that's exactly what they did and as you can imagine probst was absolutely fuming Tyson didn't really care, and from that point forward, Tyson had to be searched before every tribal council for every season where he was a juror on the bench. And that's why I love Tyson. My clothes are all too tight. I can't fit a jar of peanut butter in here. But you can hide a jar of peanut butter from Ponderosa Kitchen in the crotch of your pants, and I'm going to hide two chocolate bars on my body, and while Jeff Probst is in the peak of tribal council, <laughs> we'll nudge each other, you crack open the peanut butter, I'll start cracking open the chocolate and we'll dip the chocolate in the peanut butter and eat as we watch Tribal Council go down. The entire 
cast that is still there stops listening and looking at Jeff Probst and is just staring at us. Jeff's looking at him, but he doesn't even think to look at us. He's looking at him like puzzled, like, hey, are you guys, what's going on? We're not like engaging anymore. What's And he looks over and he goes, what are you doing? Who gave him that? Someone's getting fired. I just like dead stare in his face as I'm like taking more bites. <laughs> and for the last story of this video, we are talking about season 16, Micronesia, fans versus favorites. At the final nine, the episode where Ozzy is blindsided in a shocking five to four vote, where he didn't even bring his idol to tribal council that night. Pulling a JT before was cool, huh? Truly a game changer. And when I first got into Survivor, I was always told it was really Ceri's plan, Parvati just went with it. But then I began to hear more information about how it wasn't actually Ceri's plan, she just wanted it to happen and went along for the ride. Apparently, from what I was hearing, it was actually Parvati's plan. And Ceri even admitted this herself in a preseason interview for Game Changers in February of 2017 when she said she was just a cog in the wheel. And then in the actual episode of the season on Game Changers, she straight up tells us in a confessional that she didn't start the blind side against Ozzy, she just participated. I didn't start the blind side for Ozzy, I participated in fans versus favorites, but that was like eight years ago or something. I mean, get over it. <laughs> huh. Revealing. But the story goes deeper. And this is what blew my mind. In the same preseason interview for Game Changers, Ozzy mentions how it wasn't really Sari, but Parvati. And Amanda who got him out. Hold up a minute. Did that man just say Amanda? Amanda, the woman who was gaga for him, who was gonna have his Oslets with him. If you watch the episode, Ozzy, Amanda voted against Jason, not you, and was shocked in the next episode in the aftermath. You weren't there for that. We even saw Parvati reassure her. Amanda said she wasn't happy. I feel really bad that I couldn't tell you last night. I, mean, I know like, you feel really out of the loop, but like you're not. She has Natalie and Alexis and wrapped around her finger, and Suri didn't even tell me that she was voting for Ozzy. So she's got little Suri wrapped around her finger. I don't get this. Why would Ozzy give Amanda credit? Fast forward three years later, and in a fundraiser for Eliza Orland's political campaign, Ozzy was on a Zoom call with a fan, and the fan ended up making a Reddit post about what Ozzy said. Apparently on this Zoom call, Ozzy said, again, that Amanda should get credit for taking him out. Ozzy, what are you smoking? What are you talking about? But then the next day, Ozzy was on an RHAP podcast, and he said the same thing. He even mentioned the same Zoom call, so the Redditor was being honest. I, I talked about this in a, a Zoom call with uh, for Eliza's thing. Ozzy told us the story that a few years after the season, he talked with Amanda and she told him what really went down with his ouster. Apparently Amanda and Parvati were off camera and hatched a plan to get him out. Amanda was going to buddy up to those not in the blind side while Parvati was going to be the bad guy and take the wrath probably from James, which we saw happen. Amanda was going to deny being a part of the blind side to save face, both in the game and on TV. That's why they didn't want to be seen on camera strategizing, because it would give them a storyline, and the women didn't want to give them any more than they already had. Now, do you 100% uh, believe that? Because I feel like that that is like a major piece of Survivor history that would be changed if that was the case. Mm -hmm. I think Harvey said, hey, I'll be the bad guy. I'll be the one so that you can save face with, with Ozzy. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I do believe that. Whenever I see Parvati, I forget to ask her. Yeah. But we should ask her. We obviously saw the other four Black Widow Brigade members turn on Ozzy in the episode, although the Black Widow Brigade wasn't officially named until the episode after Ozzy was taken out. In reality, Amanda was in on everything and was just acting it up. Which, to be fair, I do think some people are going to say, well, do you really think Amanda can act that well? But then I would counteract that by saying, have you seen her in into the blue too. We come back and beat you. You cough up something good. Like what? You're bored. And if we continue to kick your butt? Ozzy later mentioned the story again at the start of 2021 in an interview with Paper Magazine, as well as repeating it on a podcast called Drop Your Buffs in August later that year. But it wasn't until we heard from another firsthand source about this story that I knew it needed to be talked about. Because in March of 2022, not too far from when this video was published, Parvati went on Tyson's podcast and mentioned the truth of the story herself. We actually had agreed, and this was never on camera, because we hit out when we made yeah. this agreement, but we'd agreed that I would be the bad guy, 
bad cop and she would be good cop. And then two months later, in May of 2022, she went on to drop your buffs, the one that just had Ozzy, and the question was asked explicitly, is this story true? She was like, well, I think what we're gonna have to do is like, we'll have to be two different roles. And I was like, one of us is gonna have to be bad cop, one's gonna have to be good cop. And she, and I was like, who are you gonna be? And she's like, good cop. And I was like, okay, I'll be bad cop. Like, that's who I'm gonna be. And she was gonna be the one who stayed innocent, kept her hands clean. And that was the dynamic that we had throughout the game. So she was 100% aware when we were blindsiding Ozzy. Mm. She mm. just played it so well that nobody knew it. And then at the end at Tribal Council, she did not claim it. What about if any part of your game has been genuine? I haven't been faking anything that I've done at Tribal, uh, the tears. She didn't get the respect that she deserved, I think, at the end of Tribal Council because she didn't step forward and be like, I was involved in that. Parvati and I had an agreement that this was the role I was going to play. That was the role she was going to play. And I played you just as hard as she did. And here we are. And I believe Parvati, just like I believe Ozzy, just like I believe Sari from many years ago about her involvement. And really, after all this talk and explanation, the main crux is that Amanda Kimmel is a little more underrated than she should be. Put some respect on the Kimmel name, people. And that's going to be five more wild survivor moments not shown on camera. Some pretty great stuff in this bunch. We laughed. We cried, we went out and bought some granola bars. Woo! In the end, this video is just one giant granola bar sponsorship, which I also quickly want to say, if you can identify what granola bar company was in that episode, please let me know. For the life of me, I could not figure it out. Let me know your thoughts on all of these wild stories. And if you want, if there's anything else you think I should check out for the future, a big thank you to my patrons for blindsetting me every month in a good way. You guys are definitely the good cops to my bad cop. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to throw away the wrapper on your way out and I will see you in the next one once I take an acting class or two. Need to brush up on my shocked Pikachu face. They want you gone. Like that's why I don't know what to do because it's weird, perfectly like I have no power over here. So I'm pushing Will you tell me who everyone's voting for? Yeah. Just at least tell me. No, I will. I had a conversation with Parvati. I didn't tell her everything, but I told her enough to get her to trust me. I knew that Amanda was lying to me when she told me that they were voting for me. Like, I know you're trying to get rid of me, but I'll just play along with you right now. It's like, thanks for looking out for me, buddy.